Uh, you know, uh, it just seems to me that, you know, on some level with all writing, you get to that point where you can no longer distinguish between... I mean, it happened to me many years ago when I was writing this very long essay about Herman Melville, and right in the middle of it, I just said, like, I'm writing fiction. I'm writing fiction. I, don't, I didn't know Herman Melville. I'm, I'm, I'm writing about the, the, you know, what he thought and what he believed and wh how he perceived the world. It's completely imaginary. I'm, I'm imagining a character. But is it about yourself? Did you think, oh, that's me? On some level, yeah, sure. Not, not consciously, but, well, it was conscious then when I became aware of it in the middle of, of, of writing the thing. But, you know, I, I think that's true of writing in general. I mean, I don't think you can really get away from that. If you're writing on any level of intensity, sure, you're, you're enlisting these energies. Uh, and then what rules you're playing by is another question altogether. I mean, what, what limits you're putting on it, what what things you're not allowed to do. Uh, but, I mean, it's funny, creative nonfiction, I mean, if you think about journalism, uh, you know, I mean, Woodward and Bernstein, is that creative nonfiction? Because they, <laughs> they bring you inside the head of people and say, he thought as he approached the desk, this is a terrible thing that's happening. You know, I mean, so many journalists are, feel free to invent things like that. Uh, but I don't think that's what they mean by creative nonfiction. Like, yeah, um, no. Well, I mean, I, I was thinking of it in connection with, uh, with, uh, with your book, Jim. I mean, just in, in the sense that, um, uh, as exactly as you say, that um, you might have told very different stories or someone else might have told very different stories using much uh, the same material, the lives of, of the thinkers that you, that you cover. Yeah. Someone else might have constructed a very different story. And why? Uh, and why would someone else um, have constructed a very different story from those materials? Uh, and, and in that sense, it might very well be that the story you shape when you, when you write about Montaigne or, or Plato and so on has a lot to do with, with what, in, at least implicitly, you're discovering about yourself and the journey into yourself as you're engaging. Uh, again, that's a very... Well, let me... Um, Here's the reason I sort of I reacted badly to the dictum, is that it seems to me that um, the when I'm really serious about trying to understand something in the way it really was, um, I only begin to feel like I'm on the right path when I have the feeling I don't. I, this is unfamiliar to me. I don't get it. It's strange. It's something that poses a challenge for me to comprehend. Mm -hmm. And that um, I think in particular in, a, in, in the contemporary culture of creative nonfiction being almost a synonym for memoir, there's a somewhat lazy um, uh, assumption that the self is a sort of easily, I, I know this isn't true of Cutsy, uh, easily charted territory and that uh, uh, that you can stay within uh, this range of putatively known experience and that'll give you all the resources you need to do creative nonfiction. It seems to me almost the other way around, that a much better school for serious nonfiction is to have been a reporter, a journalist, to have written obituaries, to be a historian, to be a poet, to, um, to be um, keenly aware of the strangeness of all of the different uh, 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 things that constitute um, uh, cultures, civilization, experience, all, uh, a murder in the 19th century.